Hey guys, uh, so I did have a request to um, talk a little bit about my agoraphobia, um, so let me get my coffee here, I figured I'll do that, um, by the way, I thought this was really, really neat, can you see that beef and Sarah, and then uh, on the back, I couldn't get through the daily grind without you. Anyhow, um, yeah, I guess, uh, you know, I, I, I could go on and on and on and on. I guess I'll just kind of say how I got to this point briefly, um, and, uh, where, where I'm at now, I, I suppose. Um, well, I mean, you guys kind of know where I'm at now, but I'll get into it a little bit. Um. Okay, um, basically, I've I've always had like social issues, um, I and sleeping problems too. Uh, I remember as far back as as, as early as I can remember. Uh, I remember never being able to sleep and fucking getting up in the middle of the night and walking around and shit like that when I was like five six, you know. Um, so sleeping has always been an issue of mine, and I, I really wonder how much of that, uh, has contributed to this. Um, but, uh, growing up, um, I really only had one friend, uh, well, in my early years, and that was my neighbor, and he, he treated me like shit. He was, like, kind of a bully, but he was still... The only person that I spoke with, really, um, you know, in my age group, anyhow. Um, so, uh, we, we, uh, ended up moving around a lot. Um, well, not a ton, but, I mean, I went to, uh, what, four different schools, um, during the course of my schooling. Uh, and I, I used to be... Like I said, I was always kind of a loner, um, but at the same time, like during high school, I remember being um, not really popular, but a lot of people would talk to me, um, and it would it would make me quite uncomfortable. Um, I had a very small group of you know core friends. Um, uh, which unfortunately only one of them I speak to today. Um, the others, I guess, couldn't handle, you know, they'd always want to go out and shit. And, um, as I got older, uh, I'd go out less and less and less and less. Um, there were a couple of turning points, I think. Um, one of them, well, I, I won't get into detail, but I, I came from a pretty abusive family um i got a lot of shit and uh you know uh yeah just just generally abusive um so i learned to tread quietly uh i i learned to not really speak up um thankfully in my adult years i've, I've gotten better at that but um uh you know i i was a very quiet child um, and, um, sorry, I'm catching my train of thought here. I've never, uh, I mean, I've said this before, but never all at once. <laughs> um, so yeah, after high school, um, the social, you know, I, I, I had a job. Um, well, I've always worked up until I was 30, uh, I think 30. Um, but I was never able to keep a job for very long. Um, after I'd get through like the training and it, it started to get into the routine and I started to get to know people, um, that's usually when either I'd get sick or, um, and by sick, I mean like, you know, I'd actually physically get sick. Uh, 
or due to my sleeping problems, I'd sleep through the alarm or whatever. Uh, I've quit several jobs. I've walked out on a couple jobs. Um, you know, I've been fired from a few uh, simply because I, I couldn't I couldn't do it any longer. And you know, I'd I'd go. Um, Oh, I'd be jobless for a little while and then repeat the process and I cripes, I've probably had two dozen jobs over the course of my life. Um so that that was something I've 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 never been able to hold a job down for very long. Um so you get used to being poor. <laughs> um But, um, yeah, I, I lost a lot of friends, um, cause they, uh, well, back then I, I didn't even truly understand what was going on. Um, uh, you know, I knew, I knew something was up because I didn't want to do the things other people did. Um, they just made me uncomfortable. Um, you know, I avoided groups of people at pretty much all cost if I could, uh, things like that. And it wasn't as bad then as it is now. Um, this has definitely been a progressive thing. Uh, and around the time I was, I want to say 16 or so, um, I started drinking heavily. <laughs> And that didn't stop until I was in my, like, early 20s, probably 23, maybe 24, somewhere in there. Um, and that actually helped uh, eliminate that, I mean, completely. I actually didn't have social anxiety uh, when I was drunk. Uh, amazing thing, that. But, you know, you can't really stay drunk 24-7. Um, oh, my phone went off. I'll get in here in a second. Uh, I mean, I suppose you could, but, uh, that, that wasn't the choice I wanted to take because I saw my mother who is, she has a drinking issue herself. I, I won't, I won't get too much into it just in case she ever sees this, <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, she, she, I didn't want it to become to that point, so, um, I stopped drinking, um, and when I did stop drinking, uh, that's when I really started to notice how bad things were becoming, um, uh, another turning point that I think might have had a lot to do with it. I've had a lot of time, obviously, to think about this. And not like it matters. I mean, it's it's in the past, and I am who I am, and despite 25 years of trying to be someone else, you know, I finally have just been like, okay, <laughs> this is it. This is, this is how it is. Uh, and things have gotten a lot better since then a anyhow I, I think I think one of the major turning points was um, I was I, I started talking to this girl online in um, Canada and uh, we had a lot of similar interests um, I actually um, I used to pirate games a lot and shit which yeah I know that's bad but uh, and hey game companies I've paid you your money back and then some so keep off my ass a anyhow I, I i pirated games and back then the only way that you could like reliably do that is um uh, irc so uh, i was a part of an irc group uh that would do that kind of thing and um uh i met a girl there um who would her games and my games were very synchronistic and uh we kind of started talking and shit and 
long story short, after a long period of time, I don't know, six months or something like that of talking, um, I started to make trips up to Canada, uh, which, you know, this was before it got bad. This, this was when I was actually able to do things like that. Um, so I, I took a couple trips up to Canada and, um, th she ended up coming down here for two weeks. Um, and, um, when she came, she, you know, brought the majority of her things because she knew it was going to be a couple weeks. Um, and she ended up staying. Uh, she never went back. So, uh, we ended up getting a place together and, um, uh, about Christmas, we were together, oh, a year, roughly, a year and a half, something like that, um, I mean, like, living together, uh, and things were well, they were great, uh, we, I don't think we ever had one single argument, um, and, uh, during the winter, I, I had a car wreck, from a DUI back when I was 18, which I know that's terrible. Um, you'd think that would have made me stop drinking right then, but it didn't. Um, however, thank God it was only me. Uh, I had a car wreck and, um, it, I ended up with a lot of injuries from that. It was a bad one. I had head trauma and broken ribs. And uh, again, that probably didn't help matters either um but when i was about eh, 20 um i i think the car wreck must have like weakened my knee or something um because i bent down to we had the um the kitchen drainer under the sink and i i bent down to grab that and my kneecap went <laughs> and uh, obviously i didn't stand back up after that uh and I ended up having to go to the hospital and all that shit. And they had me in a full fucking leg cast. And I had crutches and all that shit. Um, and they ended up having to do surgery on it. And this was around uh, Christmas time or so. Um, and she was planning on going back to visit her family for Christmas. And uh, this was planned ahead of time. I, I knew about it and everything. Um... And she went there to go to visit her family, um, and never came back. Uh, and the, the weird thing is she left like all of her shit. Um, and I mean, some of it like really personal stuff, like, uh, her artwork and all that. Um, so she never came back and I, I obviously tried to call and call and call and call and um she would never return my calls and I, I finally got somewhat of a story from her mother um uh her her mother ended up talking to me and uh she said that um amanda was her name that amanda had uh she had some bills that uh she owed people money basically she owed you know companies money and she had bill collectors after her and she wanted to stay up there and take care of that uh which obviously is kind of a bullshit excuse because uh, and i told her hey I, i'm more than willing to help with that um but anyhow that broke my heart um very much uh and after that happened um I lived alone, uh, for a good, <laughs> it, it was, it was about five years. I lived alone for about five years. Um, and this was still during the, oops, sorry. This was still during the point when I was drinking too. So, uh, that obviously accelerated the drinking a little. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't have any contact with people outside of occasionally stopping into a bar to get beer to bring home 
Um, and that went on for five years. Uh, so I got extremely, extremely used to being completely alone. Um, I, I think that was one that probably a major one. Um, anyhow, as time progressed, uh, you know, more, more of the same shit. Um, I, I had been fucked over by people that had come and gone in my life and you know after a while it just gets to the point where you you question the motives of everyone um you question the thoughts of everyone uh you question what they think about you um and eventually after so many years of that um that's all you really think uh and i actually think that um i did a lot of you know i've been through counseling christ i started counseling at like 15 um they first diagnosed me as bipolar um which i don't think i was um, well, I know I wasn't. I was angry because of my fucking upbringing. So that's probably why they thought bipolar. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I had been in and out of counseling all my life. And it went from agoraphobia to social anxiety to... Or I'm sorry, it went from bipolar to social anxiety to agoraphobia to agoraphobia with panic disorder um and uh i also have a sneaking suspicion i did a lot of research on um i can't think of the name of it now as asperger's and um i uh, that applies a lot to me i'm really good with numbers um like, they gave me a test, uh, and this test was, I'll, I'll, I'll just tell you what the test was. You can do it in your head. Um, stop me when I get to the number seven. Two, four, one, three, eight. Repeat those numbers back to me. Um, now, if you're able to do that, that's one of the tests that they give to see if you have Asperger's. Uh, I was able to successfully rattle off up to, uh, they, they did that again. And, um, well, they didn't say the, tell me, you know, stop me when I get to seven. Uh, they did that all the way up to seven digits. And, you know, I was able to just, and apparently you aren't supposed to be able to do that, I guess. Um, that's one of the signs. So, uh, they, they, they gave me that test when I finally admitted to myself, uh, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit. The breaking point when I realized that it has gotten to where I can't, I, I, I just can't continue fooling myself. Um, I was working for Comcast out of my house and it was a really good job. Um, it paid very well. I, I hated the company, but, you know, whatever. Uh, it paid very well. I was doing something I liked. Um, I was doing manual virus removal remotely from my house. So, um, but the the problem was it, it got to the point where um, I, I'd be done working but since I was home, I was never able to leave work. Um, you know, I was always there in work mode. <laughs> and uh, I kind of snapped. I, I kind of snapped. I had to... Uh, yeah, I didn't, like, injure myself or anything, but um, I, I definitely snapped. I called... Uh, I called 911 and, uh, you know, they sent out a crisis team and the whole nine yards. Um, and that got me into a program where they started medicating me pretty heavily. And 
I went through uh, two and a half years, two, two and a half years of counseling um, before my counselor himself was finally like, you know, I don't, I don't see us really making any progress. I don't, I don't think there's much we can do for you, <laughs> which isn't something you want to hear. Um, but I, I will say this, they helped me accept, um, see what was going on was, um, half of me really wanted to be a normal productive member of society who was able to, you know, go out to the movies when they wanted or out to dinner or whatever. And the other half of me, like the real me, dreaded it. Uh, absolutely was terrified of it. And there was a constant conflict there between the two. Um, which caused a lot of stress, obviously. And I would still try... I'd still try to do the things that normal people could do all the time. Having that conflicting, you can't do this. Why are you doing this? You know, um, which came with all sorts of physical ailments too. Um, uh, the, the panic disorder, for instance. Uh, what what happens there? Um, the the first thing that happens is my palms get sweaty. That's my I, I've dealt with this long enough I've come to figure out the signs my palms get sweaty um the the next stage I guess is I, I start wringing my hands kind of like that um and you might have even seen me do this on a couple of my twitch videos I've since gotten the one ring uh you know lord of the rings um sarah decide uh, you can't really see it now I feel like sitting up but anyhow it's the one ring and I've since just kind of like eh, you can't really see I've since just kind of started twirling it around my finger rather than fucking doing that because after doing that for so long you know your hands start to get all fucked up like the muscles in them and shit um and if if I was still in the position that, it, you know, was causing me that kind of stress, then it would start to get more severe. Um, uh, you know, uh, profuse sweating, um, shakes, shortness of breath, tight chest, uh, lump in the throat. And when it got really, really, really bad, I'd have heart palpitations, like pretty severe heart palpitations um to the point where they scare me a little um and then finally illness i mean like throwing up like daily uh, running a fever uh, you know uh, just <laughs> which boggles me that 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 is even possible but um Oh, my heater's going to kick on. You're going to hear a noise. I apologize. I meant to turn the heater off, but I didn't. So you're going to hear a hiss. Um, anyhow, getting back to all that. Um, I, yeah, after Comcast, uh, after I broke, I, I finally admitted to myself okay, you know, you, you can't, okay, sorry about that, uh, Amy just came home, or Sarah, <laughs> well, Amy, uh, anyhow, yeah, I'm gonna have to splice that together, and it's gonna look funny, because I don't edit, but I guess I gotta learn somehow, um, anyhow, after Comcast, um, I finally, you know, realized that this, was unable to continue um and i ended up uh finally well i mean i was uh, i was actually like one of the sickest times i've been was um towards the end of the comcast job uh 
for a good three or four weeks, I was running a fever like daily low. I mean, it was like a hundred, uh, yeah, fever of a hundred and, um, vomiting and, you know, bowel problems and all kinds of unpleasantness. Um, and I thought that something was wrong with me. <laughs> so I went to see a doctor, um, because I was still technically employed at this point um, and had insurance through Comcast. So um, I went and saw a doctor and uh, they had told me that, um, you know, they did an examination and all that. And she, the, the, the doctor, noticed that I was sweating pretty profusely. And she goes you know is this normal and i said well yeah when i'm out in public and stuff yeah that's quite normal and she she said well there's nothing physically wrong with you at all um yeah, they did blood work and all that uh and she recommended a psychiatrist um and i that's not what i wanted to hear at the time so i didn't I didn't for a while. Um, I ended up losing my job at Comcast, and I was still, uh, you know, I knew I had to go look for another job, and I was still getting sick on a daily basis, and um, it took me a couple weeks to finally ad admit to myself that, you know, the, the social anxiety, the gorephobia, whatever you want to call it, um, was just too much. Uh, and I, I couldn't do it anymore. I just, I just couldn't. I couldn't force myself to do it. Sorry about the noise. Uh, Amy came home with lore, so. Um, anyhow, uh, so, hang on just a second. I'm going to splice again. Okay, sorry. Uh, so... I, um, lost my train of thought. Um. Fuck. Good thing I can edit. Um. Right, right, right. So I finally ended up calling 911, like I said, and, um. Uh, cause I was mental, <laughs> no other way of putting it. I was, I was out of my own skin, you know, I was pacing all the time. My heart was going crazy. Um, and they ended up hooking me up with this therapist that I spoke of and, you know, they medicated me and all that. Um, and well, the medication helped, um, you know, when I was, home um basically that period of time allowed me to uh finally come to grips with my problem to finally accept it i guess um and acceptance will free you uh so i ended up applying um <laughs> at the suggestion of both my doctor and my therapist I ended up applying for disability, um, which is when they gave me that Asperger's test. Um, and at the time, I had no idea what the hell that test was. So I looked online after I had that meeting with the, um, uh, the, the Social Security, you know, the disability doctor. Uh, and I found out what this test was. And um, I started looking into it a little bit. And, uh, you know, it, it, it pegged me, it pegged me, um, Asperger's people get, it, it's basically like functionally autistic. Um, I get overwhelmed very easily, uh, especially when I'm outside, like cars, people talking, anything artificial, I guess, um, really would set me off, uh. And, you know, it, and as I said, it, it got 
continually worse over the years um, until I'm at where I am now. Um, so that's that's pretty much the story, I guess. Um, and I've I've been on disability and for mm, three years now. Um, and at first it was great. The first month was like awesome because I was like, man, I don't gotta work, you know. Uh, but then I. You, I got used to working, even though it tortured me. I was used to working, and all of a sudden, I didn't have work. <laughs> and uh, I, I understand why people now that are older and retire have a hard time with things after they retire because, um, you know, you get used to that productivity and shit so i've had to occupy myself other way that, that that's why i started twitch um uh unfortunately you, you know uh, the the problem isn't gone <laughs> nor will it be i i haven't i moved here in december um in with sarah and um i have not gone anywhere since then um i haven't even been to the store i don't think uh so it's it's uh it's a little hard to accept sometimes but um you know i am who i am um and you know i i ask myself every now and then uh if if I could be normal, would I really want to? Um, and honestly, I don't think, I don't think, I think, I think, um, I don't know. I think I'm this way for a reason. So, um, something else I'll, I'll share with you in closing here. Um, and if you have any questions about anything that I have said, you know, please comment. I will look and I will answer. Um, but I'll include down in the description. There was something I wrote and I warn you ahead of time. It is not exactly pleasant, but it's something that I wrote while I was on the cusp of accepting things. And, um, you know, it, it might make sense to those who may be in a similar position to me. Um, but anyhow, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, now I, I just kind of go day to day and, uh, I, as I said before, I'm in a clinical study cause I wasn't, I hadn't been on medication since I finally came to grips with all this. I, I cut down on the medication and eventually stopped the medication um, because I didn't feel like I needed it, uh, because I had, you know, accepted things. Um, well, as it turns out, that's not true. Um, when I moved here, uh, my anxiety, like, skyrocketed. Um, and, uh, if you'll notice the time frame, that's about the time my Twitch started to get less and less, and then I finally dropped off, um... So I've, and I wasn't sleeping more than a couple hours a night if I was lucky. Um, so I'm back on medication and I'm sleeping a little better. Um, th the anxiety's still there. Um, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm hoping that'll go away. Uh, but as I said in the other video, winter does this to me, um, this isn't unusual. This happens like almost every winter. I get, I don't know, not really depressed, but it seems to peak the anxiety a little more. Um, I think the reason being, I'm I'm a very nature person. Uh, that's the only place outside where I can feel comfortable, um, serene. Even I. Oh, excuse me. I love being out in nature. 
And, you know, when it's 10, 15, 20 below zero, I obviously can't go parading around the woods. Um, nor would I want to, because everything's dead and it just looks like shit. Um, so anyhow, that pretty much sums it up. Um, and, uh, yeah, so that's my story. Um, and again, yeah, I will link below there something I wrote while I was trying to get through this, um, and maybe it'll provide a little bit more insight. Uh, so, um, yeah, that's it. Um, I'm going to go edit these together. It's probably going to look horrible because I've never edited a thing in my life. Uh, I had to stop the video a couple times, so we'll see how that goes. <laughs> probably going to suck. But, um, yeah, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them there. And, uh, I will catch you guys soon, and have a great weekend. It is Friday. Enjoy your weekend, folks. I love you all. We'll talk to you soon.